Great, awesome. So welcome. I'm Ashley. Ashley Bull. My real title is the beer wench. That's what I'm known well, as. I know you as the beer wench. Really? That's how I know you, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Are you familiar with me? At I all? Am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. No, that's me. I don't really look like a beer wench. Most people are really surprised when they meet me because they don't expect an Aryan race blonde haired blue eyed girl walking in the door. Anyway, brought about beer. Love your beer. My mother actually went to Boston College. My parents married in Boston. We're New Yorkers, uh -huh. but they love, love, love everything Boston. So growing up, my mom was a brat. She didn't let anything in the house besides my dad's German beer, because we're German, and my mom wanted Boston beer, which was Sam Adams. And so that's what I grew up with. She used to insult my friends if they brought over anything else and be like, I don't want crap beer in my house. I don't want she would offer them water instead <laughs> of other products. We won't name them right now because we don't want to talk about that. But anyway, so I grew up knowing that St. Adams is a, one of those brands that I should follow, that I should love. However, I will be the first person to admit I don't like lagers. I am an ale fanatic. I love Belgian beers. I love high gravity. I love stouts and everything like that. If you could brew any beer outside of what you already have in the Sam Adams line, what would you do? I, I like Rauk beers. We've been messing around with really? a Rauk beer, with a Rauk, very Bamberg style Rauk beer. I love that smoke character. I like Scotch ales as well. Yeah. I like the peat smoked and I like the Bamberg smoked malt. Um, You're Irish, aren't particularly, you? Particularly, I am Irish. <laughs> but I did an Irish red. That The Irish red is, mm -hmm. is um, a beer that we first created for my wedding several years ago. Production. And I like that as well. I like ales as well, but I also like lagers. Yeah. And as a German, I would think that you know our, our German beer heritage, we're very proud of that I as well. With. I don't know why though. Yeah. It's just, but you know what? A lot of things too is I've grown into um, a following of sour ales, and lambics, uh, okay. and the weird, the Belgian stuff, obscure yeah. like Britannia, yeah, and, and yeah, and exactly. Lactobacilli and exactly. yeah. that smelly, stinky, weird, Post sour, yep. yeah. Yep. yeah. Saison, yep. you know, I'm drinking manure kind of thing. Yep. I don't know, there's something, I guess maybe I started with wine. So the characteristics from the soil and all that sort of stuff. Sure, tell well. yeah. So what kind of, I mean, for someone who loves full body beer, what would you suggest would be the best Sam Adams for me? You know, knowing that I love sour beers and I love animals and I love IPAs, double IPAs, stouts. Right. Um, well, we have a couple of, we, we, right now there's a beer lover's choice and you'll get to try them uh, tonight if you're so uh, inclined. We're going to be tasting people because we have a captive audience. We will have an IPA that is brewed with American, English, and German hops. Really? Uh, we've, we've traditionally used English hops for our ales and German hops for our lagers and not used American hops. I was going to say. But we have an IPA that's in the, in, it, it, it may not come out, it's going to be up to consumer preference. Which and American the other, hops? The other, the other oh, I can't get that out right now, but you know, <laughs> they, there's a couple of different, yeah, there's a couple of different hops in there, yeah. Um, but we also have an all noble pills, so it's a pilsner brewed with all noble hops. Spalt, Spalter, Holotel, Holotel, Tetmang, Tetmang, and, yeah. and the Bohemian Zots. Awesome. Which is also a very good beer. It's a yeah. you know, consumer preference. But we also have, um, interestingly enough, we have been messing around with some Belgian stuff that we never really worked with before. So we have some beer aging in wood right now. We put in, we have a, a barrel room that we do aging. We age Utopias in there. We have Triple Block and Millennium. We have some, some uh, Bali Wives. We have some Lambics that we've you know, really? been experimenting with. And Goose that we've been working with as well. See, Goose, Goose, yeah. Goose is my favorite. I think it's the concept and the idea of spontaneous fermentation where nature makes its product for you right. that I like about right. it. We, we tried it recently at um, the Craft Brewers Conference in Boston in, in uh, this past April, and we got a great reception from our, um, uh, our colleagues, you know, other yeah. people in the industry came by. But we installed three big wooden tons, and we're aging some, some beer on that. And again, we've never really worked, we've always been very, very particular about our yeast strains. We use, you know, um, laggy yeast and ale yeast, uh, and then we use W68 periodically for some wheat beers. But we've never really messed around with, you know, potato biceps. Now we are doing some, some experimentation. And we have yeah. three big wooden tons in the brewery right now that we've filled and we're doing some Belgian. We have a, um, a, a creek, we have um, a, 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 an old brew, and we have a sour red. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, Landers. Yep. Ah, that's Landers one of my style. other favorites. Yep. 
love so it. So maybe we'll, I mean, those will be specialty beers. Again, this is new. We don't have a bottling line at the brewery that I work in in Boston. Um, it is um, it, it, in the process of installing a bottling line, but it will be the big 750 milliliter bottles. Um, cork. cork and crown. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Refermentation, no cork and crown. And well, that's that's yet to be determined. We've not gotten to that point yet, so we don't know. That's probably where we will lean towards. And it'll only be available, you know, really in the Boston market. And it's really a table, really a table, yeah. you know, um, you know, to, to go along with the fine dip. You know, something yeah. like that. Oh, trust me. Yeah, that's why I got into beer. Um, I recently had a um, beer versus wine dinner. That's a growing trend right now. Yes. And I was not. I wasn't surprised. My guests were surprised tremendously. I had top chefs in the area um, down in Florida. Um, we had a, a top chef prepare a five course dinner. I had a friend who's in wine pair five wines, and I pair five beers. And the guests came in with this preconceived notion that wine was going to win because wine goes better with food. Blown away. They didn't know that there was this whole spectrum of beer available. Right. That's so, that's part of what I do. You know, I. I, I do bid and it's not, you know. I've seen your YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, um, no, social media is huge. That's what we're here for. <laughs> but we, we do beer dinners to, to elevate the status of beer, to, to show people that, that beer is easily as versatile, if not more so. I mean, there are 400 known flavor compounds or so in wine, and there are over 2,000 known flavor compounds in beer. It's it's a much more versatile. Well, beer has more ingredients, there's more variants. Yes. It's, it's and you have the ability to, because you don't have the laws, with, well, not the laws of wine, but you can add extra ingredients. It's a, it's a very complex beverage that people don't give it credit for. People think of beer, particularly in America, obviously overseas as um, beer cultures in different countries, but in America people think of beer as um, a yellow alcoholic soda pop, you know, fizzy that goes along with hot dogs at a ball game, but it's, it's much more than that. It's and, much uh, more than that. We're trying to elevate football, everybody's... baseball, right. basketball, right. sports, Right, but we're, we're trying yeah. to elevate the status, and that's exactly. part of why we do dinners like these and try to, you know, uh, open people's minds. I love the fact that every single one of these courses is not only paired with the beer, but actually cooked in some sort of preparation of the meal, whether it's a sauce, whether it's a braise or anything like that. Actually, the beer is um, implemented into the dish. I think that's huge. Sure is. I'd agree with you. Yep. I can't wait to see what the the flavor profile of the dishes with the beer in it, as well as how it's being paired and the characteristics each bring out with each other. Right. I'm so, looking forward to it as well. I the agree. menu yeah. looks fabulous. So I have a question. Are you a home brewer? I, I was. I've, I've home brewed, but I, I don't, for the most part, brew at home anymore because you know, I work at a brewery. And it's, it's, I also have a couple of little children. I don't have the free oh, time yeah. that I used to have. But it's, it's, it's very difficult after you, you know, if you work all week, you know, brewing. I, I know some some brewers who still do it, but but most brewers, once they get involved um, professionally, they really end up drinking their own products rather than going home and, and, and brewing. Well, that, you know, this is speaking strictly from my own um, viewpoint. Now, I can't speak for every brewer in the uh, Master Brewers Association, but it's it's a lot more difficult on weekends to find the free time to, to, to oh, brew. Oh, I can imagine. And and also because I work in Boston, um, it's our research and development brewery. I'm very very fortunate to. You know, try all sorts of new things. We yeah. get to we scientist. get to throw we get to throw new ideas at the wall and see what sticks. So awesome. I'm always you know yeah I'm always getting different <laughs> different you know brews. We're always running something yeah. different. So I always get something new that somebody come up with. And also we run a program with the American Home Brewers Association where we do long shot. So the winners get to, to brew their beers in Boston. So they get to bring them and we scale them up. They brew from a five gallon batch or they'll brew in a ten gallon batch. <coughs> but we scale it up and then if it if it wins and we can see the preference and it goes right into production. I think people should be listening to that. Yeah, I, I would agree. I've never heard of it. American Home Brewers, the long shot competition. Any home brewers out there should um, look into it on our website, on the American Home Brewers Association website, and submit anything that they think is worthwhile to our contest. You never know, it could end up That's being huge. yeah, it could end up being produced uh, on a commercial basis. That's huge. Yeah, it's great fun. It's right. a great, it's a great thrill, honestly, for us as well as them, because they have such a passion for beer that it, 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 you can't help but be enthused. You really can't. You can't. Seriously.